Um, we've got a lot of stuff from you know next gen systems over here. We've got the Mega One X1000 and even the Mega One H1 C2 system. Some uh, misnet PDA system stuff for Amiga emulation. We've got Altair systems even. Uh, Mega 2000, 600, CD32s, and a lot more. So thank you everyone for bringing those in. Uh, it's been great to have a look at them. Um, tonight, obviously, we have a special guest, uh, Trevor Dickinson from over in New Zealand. Don't hold that against him. He's yeah. actually a really good guy. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's come over especially uh, to attend the meeting tonight and have a little bit of a chat about uh, Amiga in 2016. Um, what's going on in development and obviously working with you know, this company, AM Technology, and what they're actually working on uh, in terms of projects and systems and stuff. Um, there really is a lot still going on in the Amiga world in 2016, whether you're a classic, next gen, whatever your emulation, whatever you're into, there's a lot going on. Um, so, you know, Trevor will give you I guess, a piece of that. It's nice. <coughs> and, uh, we can learn a bit more about what next gen Amiga is doing this year. All right, with that, I'll hand you over to Trevor. Thank you very much. I'll sit down. I like a picture of you also. I don't think we're going to use it for about 600 pieces, so that's great. <laughs> you have to say, Amiga. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three, Amiga. Amiga. <laughs> well, my name's Trevor Dickinson. I am an Amiga holder. Yeah. So what do you say now? Welcome, Trevor. Indeed, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Uh, just a little bit about my background. Uh, I was I explained there to, to Nick that uh, I got involved in computing way back in 1976. We were at uh, Oxford University, and the only computers I saw at university were through a big glass screen, yeah. and, it, and the room was full of big boxes. Excuse me, someone's parked for you to get out. Yeah, probably. Um, I'm not with this. <laughs> I am. And so uh, I was a scientist, I was a journalist, and we were training us in computing. And uh, all we got to do was fill out the program forms, leave letters to uh, a punch card operator. They ran the, the punch card, they produced the cards, they ran them, and a week later we get back our errors. That was computing. So when I started working as a geologist offshore, Computerizing our systems, um, I got involved with the first computers I actually used hands on, and they really worked glorified desktop kind of things. Very quickly, we into mini computers, and for some reason, they maybe headed the uh, uh, computer R&D, hardware software department. I knew nothing about computers. It was a typical Peter principle, like promoted to a job I couldn't do. So I thought, well, I better get myself a computer and find out what I'm supposed to be doing. So I was going to build a ZX. 80. Now, some of you might be old enough to know what a ZX80 is. Mm. It's a massive 1K of memory. <laughs> uh, and my hardware guy said, look, Trevor, that's no good. What are you going to do with that? If you want to know about computers, you need a Commodore PET. Yes. <laughs> so that's what got me into Commodore. So I got a Commodore PET for a I taught myself the usual basic machine code programming, peaks and pokes, all those things. And I was a committed Commodore guy. And then, because uh, I'm from the UK, and I was living in Scotland at the time, and we liked football. We, think, we called it soccer, we called it football. And uh, I was walking past the computer store, and there was this game playing in the window. And it was, it was the most dramatic game I've ever seen. There were four or five full-color players running around a football pitch, kicking the ball, and there was sound and there was and it was international soccer. I, thought, I just got to have that. I can have, have that game. But I couldn't afford the Commodore 64 because, despite what people think these days, they were expensive. Mm -hmm. The Commodore 64 was expensive. So I looked at my, my black and white or green and black pet and I looked at the Commodore 64 and I thought, we have to sell the pet. <laughs> so I sold the pet and got it up purely for business purposes, mind. <laughs> so I myself and graphics and animation. I sold the pet and I got a Commodore 64. Then I come to 128, and then I moved to America. I, was, I moved to a job in the States, in Texas. And in Texas, they've got the thunderstorms, but like Australia probably. And uh, one day, uh, the house was hit, 
case with the phone line and destroyed all my involvement to it. So with the insurance money, I bought the Amiga 2000. And um, the Amiga 2000 and the Amiga then became my computer of choice. And very shortly afterwards, I started my own business uh, back in the UK. And I had Amiga 2000s, 3000s, and 4000s. And we used 3000 and 4000 for all my published material, for our manuals, for our desktop publishing, for video work. And it became the computer I used all the way through the 90s up to about the uh, 1999-2000. So, Amigas were very important to me, and I always wanted the next one. My kids used to joke with me, what's your next computer, Dad? Well, it's going to be Amiga 5000. Because <laughs> I never got one. So, what did I do? Um, uh, about 10 years ago, uh, I had a different life after that, built a business up, stuff at first. Uh, but then was very successful and in 2004 I sold that and started to travel around the world with my wife which was, I used to go around the world all over the place because I was in the oil industry but my wife was never with me so now I had a chance to travel and uh, ended up coming out of this part of the world coming down to Australia it was a great time in Australia and New Zealand and uh, I got to love this part of the world and then my daughter uh, who was doing her OE from university ended up in New Zealand, we started coming to New Zealand you know, for one month, for two months, for three months. And eventually, we, we stayed. So that's what happened. Uh, so, why am I into Amigas now? Well, I said I wanted to make 5,000 5, and then got one. So way back in uh, 2007, 2000, yeah, 2007, a chance meeting with uh, Michael Batalana of uh, Proantho, uh, and they, they make Amiga Forever, which is an emulation of Amiga on, on X86. And uh, he was coming through London, I was living in London at the time, and he wanted to get there some Amigas, just to say hi, have dinner. And I wasn't going, because I didn't know it. But uh, I did know the uh, editor of Total Amiga magazine, which you may have seen, it's no longer around, but it's a pretty good magazine. And his pal couldn't go, so they invited me along. Uh, so I got to meet Michael, and then uh, we got to be friends, but nothing more than friends. Uh, six months later, I'm visiting Michael in uh, Amsterdam with uh, visiting Commodore Gaming. You don't even remember Commodore Gaming? Mm -hmm. PC mm -hmm. game units. They mm -hmm. failed, but you know, the, the units were nice. And uh, I met with uh, Michael and Jens Schoenfeld. I was just tagged, out, tagged along for the ride. Uh, and these are all the names that you're in the bigger world now, you'll know these names. Uh, and we just happened to meet up, we went to Belgium for some reason, Brussels, and we happened to meet up with the uh, Hyperion guys, Ben Hermans. Uh, and that day they just they got a letter from Amiga Inc. So them <laughs> for, uh, for Amiga S4. So I made the scene. I said, look, give me any help, just give me a shout. And that started it. If I'd known what those few words, <laughs> I'd end up here tonight. I still would have done it. So it doesn't matter. So yeah, so I, I got involved. I helped do some funding for a high period to keep them alive during the court case with the Migri. Um, I did some funding with them with uh, Bigger Forever to do some the new development systems. So uh, Commodore 64 Forever, Bigger Forever, more of them. Retro platform player, that, that was me doing funding that made that had that work. But I really wanted a new me. Sorry, I just got to stop for a second. Um, whoever has the Jero outside up front there, are you blocking someone from getting out to go home? If you're out on the window, if it's any of you, XMB820. Someone? Mm -hmm. Is that in here?
the department. As it turns out, you know, uh, it took longer. It costs more money. It always does in startups and business. And uh, I ended up being the one really funding it, running it. So I thought, well, this is silly. Let's just shut it down and let's just create a real company that is really funded properly and, and uh, has a business plan and a strategy. So that's how I got involved. And um, we produced the Elite One X 1000. There's it over there. Uh, but it still wasn't the 5000, which I wanted. Uh, and so we had to produce another one called the Elite One X 5000, which is just about to be commercially released. It's been out for about 18 months, two years with these testers. It's about 50 or 60 people have been testing it. Um, it's actually running very nicely now. And so now, uh, that is up. Just the order of the sale. I was going to say two more weeks, but that's a very, very bad word in the legal land. You don't say two more weeks, two more weeks never. But it, it, uh, we have the, the boards in stock, lots of them, and we'll just wait on the, uh, the OS and finish them. That's right there, so that'll go on sale. But at the same time, I'm keen to get more um, people at the lower end, uh, more younger people in, because I'm not getting any younger. Although when I had started this, I had black hair, so <laughs> the vegan, it's quite dusty. Um, um, so the one you see there, in, that's, uh, that's Stephen's machine, it's a, a prototype, or beta test version, it's the A1222, the board's called Table, and that's going to be the low cost, entry level machine, low cost for Amiga, because you've got to think that these boards are developed for the Amiga OS in small volumes, and small manufacturer volumes. So you've got a lot of uh, NRE, non recurring engineering cost to pay for uh, before you even start selling the bill. So, uh, but that's going to be, I want as low as possible. I'd sell it at cost if I get away with it. I don't think my business partner might be happy with that. <laughs> if I could sell it at cost and then I'll make money on the software to try and recover some of the cost, that would be great. But uh, that's, that uh, is not ready yet. The board's ready. Start selling tomorrow, but uh, um, Steve is running uh, Debian 8 and 9 on that at the moment. No, so um, I got myself sort of strangely into a hardware company that's evolved into a software company. Because about two years ago, <coughs> Andy West, and if, for those who don't know, Andy West is the annual uh, media show in Sacramento, California. And, and in fact, I'm going to it next week, <coughs> in this month. Um, Every year, it's the longest running uh, North American media show. Um, at Annie West, I stood up and said, Content, content, content. We've got the hardware now, now we need software content. And, uh, and from that day, we started to really focus on content. And uh, uh, Aon's been built up a, a quite a large team now of developers, over 20 people, who all work on apps and utilities and content for Amiga OS 4 and for the uh, OS 3.x. Because anything we do on OS 4, we're trying to make sure there's an OS 3.x version. Uh, and recently we brought out, uh, uh, you remember your what the media days? Commodore brought out the Enhancer software. <coughs> so, so we brought out the Enhancer software pack for OS 4, which um, really does give it a, a, a boost, I think. You brought it still on your machine? Yeah. You? Yeah, it's excellent. You know, I quite enjoy it, but it definitely adds a lot of extra features to me. Right? <laughs> well, um, we released that in April. Uh, we released an update version 1.1. Now, usually updates are bug fixes. This was actually an update with a lot of new, new features. Um, they're already working on version 1.2. So, having all these developers has really helped us uh, really push forward. Um, they're paid developers. They're not paid, what I would say, commercial rates because the Amiga world can't afford those. But they're paid <coughs> enough money to make them feel rewarded for their work, and most of these do it because for the love of the, of the computer anyway. Uh, we launched a, a, a store, Andy Store, which was not a typical store in that it runs on the Amiga rather than web browsers. It has advantages and disadvantages for that. The advantage is it's on the it's on your desktop, your workbench, we start it up, we get all the new updates. <coughs> you have to be searching around the web uh, or through a web store to find it. And it's all there on the machine. That's proved very successful. We have over 900 registered users now of Amistore. Most of them bought 
at least once and most importantly times. We've almost 3,000 purchases through the store uh, <coughs> of software. It's, it's been it's popular with users and developers. Developers are putting their work on there and now they can earn a little money from their, from their software. It's, it's been good for us because we've used that money we've got in, it's got all back into software development and allows us to pay the developers that uh, are working with them. So that's why you need, you need this trade, you need this money coming in. I hear criticisms about high period, I know it's all slow, not fast enough. There's no money. And if there's no money, nothing gets done. So by doing this with Andy Store, through Andy Store, we believe that's the way of getting more people working on, on, on development of Amiga OS, OS and OS 4, and uh, actually paying a bit of money back to the developers to keep them keeping in the industry. <laughs> Come on. Uh, hardware. Well, we've, we've talked a bit about hardware. Um, the, um, you'd be surprised how much it costs developing a motherboard. You probably won't be actually. And it, it, it's it's an incredible amount. And most people I talk to say, like, how on earth have you done that with the money you spent? You can't have done that. It's not possible. And uh, it, it's. It's not done for commercial gain. And anyone thinks I'm making a whole bunch of money selling next generation leaders, you want to do it yourself. <laughs> um, it's done because I have the time, I have the enthusiasm, and I have the cash to do it. So that's how it's done. If I, I've always said if I can break even, that'd be great. I'm still waiting for that. That'd be good. Uh, hopefully, I'm taking this so Matthew Lee, my business partner, can't hear this. <laughs> He'd go great, he'd go great with me. Uh, we, apart from the table, we have another project in, in, in the works. I can't talk about it because um, it's not really ready and it's, it, um, news will be released on that when it's, when it's, when it's around. But it, it means we're not just stopping with what we've got, we're looking to the future. The table, the A1222, will hopefully be low end cost, low cost, low cost entry level machine, which is more powerful than all the other machines are out there, apart from the X1000 and the, the X5000, but will be the lowest cost of all the machines out there. That's my intention. So try and get more people in using uh, Amiga OS. I keep saying Amiga OS, I'm actually the, the, the ultimate Amiga. I like uh, Amiga OS, I like Morph OS. Like Aeros, uh, and, I, and uh, I've got to like Linux in the last few years, Linux in the last few years, especially when it's running on our hardware, because you get a chance to use your hardware with something that's totally different. Occasionally use Mac OS, obviously I use Android because it's on everything these days, and I still use Windows as well, so you know, I'm not stuck on just using one operating system. Um, we've I brought with me, uh, obviously, an x86 laptop. Uh, this is the Alice version of the laptop. Alice after the, obviously, the Alice chip and the Amiga. But Alice, if you think of the letters, it's a laptop, A-L, incorporating a classic experience. There's Alice. Mm. So what it does is it, it runs, obviously, Windows, and in multiple boots, you can choose at the start. It runs AmiKit, which is the uh, Amiga Forever based uh, emulation or AmiKit distribution. It runs Linux, Linux, and it also runs uh, Amiga OS 4 Classic. Uh, so you can run any of those. I tend to run the AmiKit uh, because we've added a little, what we call, playing on there, Alice and Alice in Wonderland theme. We've added a rabbit hole. So through the rabbit hole, you go in, and you run Linux programs you want on your AmiKit. So it feels like you're running, uh, you know, I don't know, LibreOffice or uh, or um, Firefox in and kids as you know, in the OS 3.x environment. And, and uh, if I need my little fix when I'm traveling and I haven't got around my amigas, I've got this. So you're welcome to come and try this out later. Yeah. Um, talking about LibreOffice, um, we mentioned about 18 months ago that we were 
we've uh, commissioned um, the Freedom Brothers. They're the uh, main developers at Hyperion. They're actually contractors. They don't work for Hyperion, but they're contractors. So we contracted them to do some work for us when they weren't busy on the Hyperion work, mainly to help out. Uh, it's taken a long time, but I'm hoping that Andy West this year I will have a liberal office running on OS4 to demo, so a beta version. So we're really close to doing that, so I'm really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just take it. It's taken time, it's taken an awful lot of money. <laughs> Even <laughs> um, Also, we, we are, we're keen to meet them, so OS4 is obviously the next generation stuff. We're, we're working on software and hardware for OS3 systems. Um, another one that's taken an awful long time to come out is the Prism and Mega Mix uh, sound card. Have you got one today? No. No, yeah. That's your next one. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, it's, it's now the, the, the drivers. I can tell you why it's taken so long. The hardware's been around for a long time. Although we have actually improved certain things in the hardware. It's, a, it's an audio card, sound card, that will play all modern uh, sound file formats. Without, and on a classic of without any sort of blips or burps or, or uh, slowdowns while multitasking. So the idea is you've got uh, a, a modern sound card that plays modern sound files. Officially it's not a sound card, so I never said that. It's called a music card. Um, uh, we, we had the he read it about a year ago, but uh, it was a race <coughs> condition made meant we couldn't really consistently perform uh, when doing multitasking. Uh, so we did the worst thing we could do, really, I suppose. We couldn't have a developer involved. Start the code! It's very good, but I start from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> but he's done a really good job. And he has German, and Germans are really fixated and it's just right, and we've done that. So he's done a good job. And and uh, that's a value, a usual, a usual release, it's about to be posted, so that's definitely coming out. Um, also, the Enhanced Software Pack, the classic, is being worked on. So uh, a lot of the things you see on the OS4 will actually be running on the OS3. Um, the reason why it's taken longer is because we've had to recreate a lot of the classes and data types, just not in OS3. Um, but they, you know, they were written for OS4. So we've gone back and recreated those in OS3. So it's been a it's been a learning experience for us. It's been a, it's these are the building blocks which will help us create more software in the future. So that's what I wanted to say tonight. I didn't really want to go into too much detail about anything in particular, but I thought it's better rather than me sitting here probing on to just answer your questions. So any questions at all, apart from uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chips. 
so when that had any so that's the, that the we moved to freescale obviously um the semi were shut down so we moved to freescale the, the interesting freescale is they have 10 years of support on their chips so we get the 10 years but then the uh, cost doesn't stop coming on the bus because we're just getting bought since then. But they still have a 10 year plan for their, for their CPUs. So the, uh, the, we were planning to make three models based on one board. Uh, if you remember the publicity, there was going to be a, uh, and the idea was that it was going to be a low, a, a, a entry level, mid level, and high level. Uh, but using the same board, uh, as it turned out, the entry level one was obviously expensive as the middle level one, and the middle level one was not that much different from the high level one, so we thought this would probably work, isn't it? Uh, so we redesigned the whole concept, having produced a prototype, which was very expensive, and uh, decided to replace the X1000 with a board of the same sort of size, uh, with two CPU options, a, a P5020 dual core, and a P5040 quad core. Uh, both from freestyle. The dual core one's now ready. The quad core one is, is in the works, it's not ready yet. Uh, maybe the software. Um, <coughs> the the A1222 uh, is again freescale, it's a dual core, 32 bit, and they're all 64 bit, I think we're talking about at the moment. The, the P1, it's a P122. 1022 freescale dual core 32 bit with a 64 bit <coughs> to help me understand. Uh, uh, but it's uh, and in its current configuration, even with its supposedly crippled FPU, which is not crippled, it's still uh, faster than any other um, OS4 machine out there, apart from the X5000 and the next one. Who have you found in a sort of, um, what are the demographics of, of the audience who buy oh, these that's, machines? That's a good question. Old people who sort of went to sell it without me. Do you find a lot of young I, people? I just want to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Not talking about anything. <laughs> Don't look at me when you say that. I'd just be interested to know with all the yeah, renewed interests and the update. Yeah. I did some analysis on it. Uh, if you go to the States, the majority of the people there are mine. Uh, they have a lot of and I think it's because the Amiga was pretty successful in the States. Uh, people in the States who used Amigas used it for, for business, or for technical, or for filming, or video. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a games market in the US. The games market happened in the rest of the world. So in the US, they all had big box Amigas. And of course, I started with big box Amigas after my 128 world. Uh, so, when you look around Europe, and you look around this hall, this is a mix of people. You look around Europe, you know, Eastern Europe in particular, it's a lot younger. Mm. Uh, and I was at the, uh, last year I had the pleasure of attending three Amiga 30th shows. Uh, one in uh, one of the Computer Institute in, in, in California, which is fantastic. But one in Germany, in Neuss, and there's about 400 people there. And I'd say the average age was 30s. Mm. So that, that, I thought that was pretty good in the future. Uh, and the, the show in the UK was a smaller show, it's a different kind of show, there's about 100 people there, and uh, it's more a charity event. And again, the, the average age was a lot younger. Mm. So, but the, where do they come from? It's all around the world. Mm. I look at, look at our beta testers. Uh, I did an analysis on the X1000, we had about 95 beta testers on that. And they were from 25 countries. Mm. Uh, and Australia and New Zealand were quite high in terms of percentage. Australia, New Zealand, because New Zealand, oh, that's about the average. That's what they all say in New Zealand. <laughs> um, uh, New Zealand, Australia, UK, Germany, uh, USA, the big areas, but you can almost name any other country apart from Africa and India. Oh, and China. <laughs> I guess there's no Americans in China. But Japan, Japan was quite surprising. That's
questions. What, what can you tell us about the custom chips in the X1000 and possibly the new? Oh, well, see, you've got to remember, you know, I had this, <laughs> I can remember sitting on a lot of well in West Texas. We designed some new equipment, we were testing it, and I had the engineers there, the designers there, and we got talking about computers, a few things like do. And uh, I said, of course, the Vega, it's just the computer. So this is probably about 1989, uh, uh, right? So, you know, five years before the United Commodore, so we're still, you know, we're probably into, it's, it's 2000, prior to 3000 coming out. And, uh, and they, they were, you know, DOS, x86 men, and I said, oh, it's fantastic. <coughs> Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. So, along with about 500 other people. Oh, it was very crowded in there. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so uh, Dave Haney, Dave Haney, of course, wasn't one of the original big developers, but he was a commodore. <coughs> so he got involved with the 2000 and 3000. So, Dave Haney, yeah, I've got to travel with Dave Haney. Look at the people with the names and the chips. 
Yeah, that, well, that, well, if you've taken the Nico 1000, you'd open it up. Yeah. Inside the case, it's all the names. Yeah, really so That's right. all the people I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, all the signatures. Yeah, all the signatures. And what was even, well, obviously, uh, uh, Jay Martin has obviously passed away a few years ago, as did his dog. So the dog there, not around. Uh, but uh, what we were at the Amiga 30th uh, Computer History Museum last year, we had about 150 people from Commodore and Amiga. And I would say about, I've got this 150, about 40 of them were from the original High Toro Amiga Inc. So we had the original financier, the original venture capitalists, the secretaries, the storemen, the, the developers, all there, you know, the people I just mentioned. Uh, and I sat at the table, it was about, on the dinner on the Saturday evening, they showed a film called V for Amiga. If you haven't seen it, you won't see it yet. You might have seen something if you sponsored it through Kickstarter. <coughs> it's eventually coming out, I'm told. <laughs> but the movie's really good, it's this really good looking young guy with dark hair. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, but it, uh, it's a fantastic film. They showed that film during the banquet dinner in the evening for about an audience of 350, of which I'd say about a third of the Commodore and Amiga people. And I was at a table with Amiga Inc. people, I told the people, and they were crying. It was that emotional for them. I, I actually felt like the gate crashed their, their you know, 30th anniversary. Because there was, there was technicians, there was developers, there was, you know, storm. Secretaries, they're all there. So, yeah, so they're all around. And, they're, and they're, what's really nice is that uh, when you work for, I've worked for lots of companies, I have my own company, there's a real bond with those people that even 30 years later, it's still strong. When you watch the Viva Amiga movie, they talk about they wanted to change the world. And they, they wouldn't believe that 30 years later, the number of people that come up to them still and say thank you. Thank you, because of you, I did this. Yeah. And we, we were in the uh, show in Germany in Noyce, and uh, one day we escaped to, uh, the show was finished, so I was leaving the next day, and um, one of the organizers decided to do us on a road trip to his house in you know, Germany, and there was Holland, all very close together, and his family's in Holland, so we'll go and see his little computer game in his house, and go to a few pubs on the way, and go to a, a computer game show in video show, video cartridges. And so we went to the show and it was a little hall, probably about this size, but three different rooms, full of video game machines and cartridges. And when I was like a Commodore one, I just couldn't find any. I found one. We won the C62, C32 cartridge. And one guy went, is that big thing? It went Belgium, right? A little village. Is that our table car? Well, that was it. We were swamped after that. Well, they were swamped after that. So we got photographs taken with the table right there. So, and the people were thanking him for, for developing the uh, media. So it was really quite nice. It's quite nice to see the effect. One more question, and then we'll call it like to you. Awesome, but the thing is now, 
it's all done in software. So it was still not good, but it's all done in software. But like, it had an error call that the near terms to, to one to the medium. Well, you can get software that does all things that the near terms does. I know, and I think I know that the near terms the entire source code is free. So you could run even the original software on it, but you probably wouldn't be able to get most of the using actions. The one that a fair bit of extender, extreme editing, doesn't matter. Did we answer the question? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Let's see you go. Can we all thank Trevor for having along tonight? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so he's got